Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Every Rocky Ever, a Colorado Rockies podcast, part of the Rocky Mountain Rooftop Network, a proud member of the Fans First Sports Network. I am your host, Skylar Timmons, joined always here by my brother, Dustin Timmons. Hi, do we ho? Now, we're recording this a day after the Rockies suffered their 100th loss <laughs> of the season. Rough times uh, in Rockies land. First time in 30 years. And it's been one heck of a way to celebrate 30, <laughs> the 30th anniversary of the team. And this is our last episode in season. So before the season has finished, this will be our final in-season episode. And we figured, hey, Dustin has a ton of baseball cards. And specifically, he has the kind of this promotional inaugural deck of cards from 1993 still in its package still in the original box had that and we figured hey let's go through and just breeze through look at the 93 team and just who was on there and well we won't spend a whole lot of time on the big name guys guys that'll get their own episodes but there's a lot of guys that we can just kind of touch on here that that played for the rockies were part of the initial grouping or weren't a part of the initial grouping, even though they're in the deck of cards. Just pretty wild. Oh, yeah. And I remember getting this at the stadium. And who do we have up on the very front for all of you in YouTube land? Don Baylor, the manager. Mm -hmm. Right out there on the on the cover of this box. <laughs> so. and, it, and Don Baylor's been on my mind er earlier this year. If you go to purplerow.com, I wrote a three-part series about Don Baylor and just his life and career. But one of the things that sticks with me is he was the the top man for that job. And we'll obviously have an episode about Don Baylor down the line. He deserves one. But with the Rockies in this 30th season, 30th anniversary season, that statement that he had, whereas an expansion team, everybody expected them to lose a hundred games and Don Baylor He's like, yeah, it's not in my competitive spirit to just sit there and accept that. And so they managed to squeak in under 100 losses. I think they had, what, 97? 95. So they had 95 losses there in 1993, which for an expansion team, better than people thought they were going to be. But that statement held true for 30 years until 2023 when they finally cracked it. But he's the right man to have on the cover. Oh yeah. You know, and he was awesome, awesome leader. And it's, it's sad that he's not around anymore, but then it was also a good thing that he didn't have to see that hundred loss season. And the way things have gone is 2023. We're just, we want to forget. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to forget this season, but not the history. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And so what's funny is this in this deck of cards and there, there's guys that were part of the almost Rocky, almost every almost Rocky guy, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's a few out there, but then there's some old staples. You see some of these guys that ended up being, you know, foundational building blocks in the, in the organization, which is kind of cool. And you know, what's crazy Skyler about that 93 team how many of those guys went on to coach mm -hmm. you know that made it to the big leagues either as a manager or assistant coaches it's 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 really crazy to see and some of these guys what routes they went after their Rockies tenure mm -hmm. speaking of let's before we get into more of the cards and like we said this is going to be good if you want to watch this episode on YouTube uh, if you're listening to it, you'll still get the same stuff. But if you want to see the cards a little bit better, uh, you can check out the YouTube video version of it. But that 93 team, that initial coaching staff, we already mentioned Don Baylor is the manager. Who was the bench coach? Old Don Zimmer, known for his long time with the Yankees. And you know, he went on, he was with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. He, Don Zimmer got around baseball quite a bit, managing, uh, bench coaching, helping out with coaching all kinds of plays getting thrown around by Pedro Martinez. 
Uh, who knows? But we go on. Pitching coach was Larry Bernarth. I believe that's how it would be pronounced. And then hitting coach, Amos Otis. And then the first base coach, Ron Hassey. Third base coach, Jerry Royster. And the bullpen coach was Rick Matthews. Any of those names stick out to you, Dustin? Not a single one of them. <laughs> Guys like Larry Baranoff, they were he was the pitching coach through the 95 season. Uh, Ron Hassey stuck with the team. He was the third base coach in 94 and 95. So uh, Rick Matthews bounced around in the organization. So there's guys that became staples. Uh, if you ever look up on baseball reference, color Rockies managers and coaches, you can see the coaching staffs up until 2020. They haven't updated that page, but a lot of continuity season to season for a lot of guys, early years, a little more up in the air, but that was the coaching staff of the 93 team that led the way. So we might as well get into some cards here. All right. Coming off at number one, the first card of the deck, David need <laughs> the need for speed. <laughs> oh man. And some of these are just those, those corny spring training shots mm -hmm. that they have a few, you know, probably in an inner squad uh, down in, in Arizona. For these guys, but David Need was actually a staple in the Rockies starting rotation for a few seasons. I remember going to a game and having David Need, you know, that need for speed coming mm -hmm. up. Pretty sure my memory is a David Need. I want to say it was in middle school. One of the math teachers, they had a Rockies poster on the thing, and like this is mid 2000s. And I look over, oh, it might've been in high school, middle school or high school. So somewhere late to the mid, early 2000s or like 2010 to 2012, somewhere in there. I'd always look over at the wall and they had a David Need poster, just the most random poster. And it's just David Need up there. It was either him or Denny Nagel, but I'm pretty sure it was David Need. And I, that was my memory of David Need, just looking at that poster during math class <laughs> and seeing that. I'm like, why is that there? Well, you know, he, he pitched for the Rockies for four seasons, for four years. And, and uh, you know, his first couple seasons were, you know, decent for a, you know, for a new organization. And then injuries kind of took him away those last, those other two years with the Rockies. but. In that '93 and the short '94 season, he was a he was a you know a starting rotation guy. But what a great one! What a great one! And the hair, I love looking at the hair back in the those early '90s. <laughs> kind of the the hair rock mullets, going the old on. Jerry curls. <laughs> yes, <laughs> first Rocky to wear number seventeen before it. Became very famous for Todd Helton. Yeah, it was right when Todd Helton comes around in 97, David Need's gone. Yeah. And he was picked up with the first pick of the expansion draft from the Atlanta Braves in 92. Pretty solid. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so, as like we said, we're just going to go through these guys, pick out a little bit of some memories of them. And yeah. and some of them may get further episodes, like a David Need. Oh yeah, but we'll touch on these guys. But here's one: when I do my baseball name game, this is one of my guys to go to in the second card of the deck. A Sir Mister Quentin McCracken. <laughs> oh yeah, I love Quentin McCracken. Now I I almost forget of him as a Rocky. I always remember him in Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. One of those guys that was in that expansion when they, when they started out, but, and I always thought of him as an outfielder, but in the card we have here, second base, Quentin McCracken. Mm -hmm. It's interesting looking at Quentin McCracken's things was drafted in 1992 by the Rockies. 
and then didn't debut until 1995. So you've already got one of your minor league prospects in this 93 inaugural season deck. Yes. Sir. And a spring training. You know, and, and Quentin McCracken went on to have an excellent career. Mm-hmm. I would think it, you know, I, I think of him just a, a competitor, Quentin McCracken. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he played outfield, right? In most of his career. Outfielder and pinch hitter. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. I saw, saw the second base on his card and I said, wait a minute. But yeah. Quentin and it's McCracken. entire career. They must've drafted him as a second baseman, but he never outfielder his entire big league career <laughs> all right now skyler this one the rockies have a history of solid third baseman and third baseman they could hit and that was true from the very beginning when they had charlie, charlie hayes. hayes who now notably has his son key brian hayes a stellar third baseman for the Pittsburgh Pirates, probably going to win a gold glove here in 2023. We're very competitive for that. Yeah, Charlie Hayes. I just always remember that name from, we've mentioned it before, the MLB PA game on our Super Nintendo. Oh, yeah. You know, and Charlie Hayes, would he, he could hit the ball. And I remember when he went on, he, once he left the Rockies, he was with the Yankees. And when he won that World Series in 96, or, I think it was 96, I was so happy for him because he was such a solid player for the Rockies. And to see him, you know, win a World Series with the Yankees, that was cool for him. Don't like the Yankees, but I do like Charlie Hayes. <laughs> now, Skyler, this guy. You wrote an article about him in uh, on purplerow.com, but he here's what that inaugural season starting pitcher Bryn Smith. Mhm. Who how how old was he in that 93 season because he looks like he's 45 and has seven kids waiting at home. Well, he he looks like the manager on on major league. Mm-hmm. It looks like Lou. Like, here's his, here's his little profile pick in the back. Yeah, <laughs> gotta go. You're from the <laughs> yeah. So he made his pro debut in 1975, mm-hmm. and so you see, you know, 18 years later with the Rockies, he's he's into it. <laughs> he was 37 at the time. Yeah, and I, I wrote an article about him, Purple Row, earlier in the season uh, because he threw, he was the opening, he was the, uh, through the opening day start at Mile High Stadium, the first Rockies home game, and probably the best start. He, he did not have a good year with the Rockies in his final professional season. 11 games, made five starts, an 8.49 ERA, went two and four. He only threw about 30 innings that season, but that first start at Mile High Stadium, uh, he threw out probably one of the best starts of his career. I think he went on to like toss it. was like seven shutout innings or one run ball. I have to pull up his, uh, his game logs here, but it was a pretty spectacular outing for the very first start at home for the Rockies. Let's see, pulling it up it, here in it, 1993. It reminds me of six, Jamie Moyer. Yeah, he tossed seven shutout innings, allowing six hits, just one strikeout, and a hit by pitch in that very first start. Oh, yeah, and then it kind of went downhill from there. But he threw out some good outings, then was moved to the bullpen in May. But yeah, and that ended his career June 1st with the Rockies at the age of 37. But that very first start, he's kind of set that tone of just dominating at Coors Field against the Montreal Expos. So he's Man, the first evidence him. where you can pitch at altitude. Yeah. Every he, now and then. <laughs> have some success. As an old man. That gives me hope. You know, if I'm yeah. 38. I, yeah, I mean, but Brent, he looked like he was 45. Do it. Oh. 
if I grew out a mustache, maybe get that going on. But anyway, the number six... he wore number twenty eight too. Oh, just like a one Aaron Cook. Yes. <laughs> um, this guy is going to have his own episode sometime. Right here. Mr. Dante Bichette. And I don't think we really need to say much other than what a guy. Duke the could mash. In left field. Oh, man. Just fit in perfect for what baseball needed in, you know, what we needed in Colorado. I will say before the Dante Bichette episode, if the DH had been in existence for the Rockies during his career, Man, that would have, I'm pretty sure that would have changed a lot of things, specifically for Dante, because we'll talk about it eventually, but the knee injuries and his defense being notoriously bad, or his motion in Colorado, despite being a really good outfielder in his career, just injuries limited that. Well, you know what's crazy is, is we think of how terrible of a of an outfielder he was rated, but he just barely had his record broken for assists in the outfield mm-hmm. or whatever it was that I heard something about, you know, Dante Bichette and his, his, his number of assists from the outfield. And I was like, what? Yeah. Nolan Jones finally in the 30th anniversary season breaks Dante Bichette's single season outfield assist record with 18. Awesome. So Dante Bichette, will get to you. And then we covered this player a few episodes back, and that was Alex Cole. It's the sweet those, sunglasses. Those awesome shades, even in his picture in the back, <laughs> rocking them. Awesome. You know, and, and uh, we, talked about, we talked about him last week and uh, in a couple episodes back. And moving on in our seventh card, we have Pitcher. Scott Aldred, you know, and his his time with the Rockies was very brief. Mm-hmm. Just his cup of cup of coffee with the Rockies, and uh, well, he was he was with Detroit and then the Rockies, Montreal, and he bounced around until two thousand. Mm-hmm. So you know, and, uh... stuck through. With the Rockies, five games, a 10.80 ERA, just six and two-thirds innings. But he did give up eight runs, eight earned runs on 10 hits in just that brief amount of time. Five strikeouts to nine walks, so flash in the pan. All right, and then we go to second baseman Roberto Mejia (laughs) from the Dominican Republic, who played for him. Played with the Rockies for three years. He was, you know, slated in as is going to be that second baseman for the Rockies. And I believe it was pretty recently this season. There was some sort of connection. A friend of the show, Patrick Lyons, mentioned something about Roberto Mejia. And I can't remember what it was, but it had something to do with Ezekiel Tovar. Nolan Jones had something to do with the rookie infielder. I'll see if I can find it, but I would say it's probably going to be about steals and and something. Yeah, I'll have to. No, probably not because he didn't. I always thought of him as a you know a lot of these guys from this '93 season. Our biggest memories of them aren't real memories; they're just their names and associating them to the video game that we played mm-hmm. back in the day. And so it's kind of fair. Like I always get confused sometimes like, Oh man, he was so great. And I was like, wait a minute. That was in the video game, you know, and anybody could be good in the video game world. And here I found it. Uh, Patrick Lyon said, this is in relation to Hunter Goodman, Hunter Goodman's second inning triple. This was on September 10th on Sunday night is his third since debuting. Believe it or not, he's not the first Rockies player with three triples throughout the first 12 games of his career. The other, Roberto Mejia in 1993. Nice. That's a good one. Right so there, Patrick, Patrick Lyons. Lyons coming through. Sweet. You know, 
like you said, there's a lot. We're not going to cover most of their career and stuff. We're just throwing the names out for that 30th anniversary. And here's another guy. I only associate him to the video game, and that's Jeff Parrott. <laughs> the very strong jawline and the thinnest handlebar mustache. The Fu Manchu almost. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he was... He was a pitcher for the Rockies that year. Uh, nothing too special. All I remember is on our video game, I never wanted to pitch him. <laughs> Pitched 40 games, 5.38 ERA that season at the age of 31. It's not terrible. But definitely the workhorse that level Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Then we go, speaking of, of a former Rocky that turned into a pretty successful major league manager, Joe Girardi. There you go. Uh, that's a beautiful picture, too. Look at the stride and the swing. Mm-hmm. And then, I, like I said, these these ones for those seeing, watching the, the video. A, the first day of school type of pictures. Yes, the first day of school. You know, mom wants that embarrassing photo for you, and we'll cover Joe in his in his own episode. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, but he was that first staple catcher, solid both sides of the baseball. And mm-hmm. sadly, I he was another one just like Charlie Hayes when I saw him with the Yankees winning World Series, and I said, you know, what? good for you, Joe. Hate the Yankees, but I like you. <laughs> And he was one that when the Rockies had managerial change openings, he was always a guy I thought would maybe s- slide into mm-hmm. uh, the, the Rockies managing spot, but it hasn't happened. And who knows? Okay. You ready for this one? We already covered this guy. Andres Galarraga. The big cat. <laughs> so he's trucking in this in this card. But we we covered him one of our first episodes. Our very first player episode. Yes. The big cat. Um one right after him. This is one that wait if you went to the Rockies games at Mile High Stadium, this guy, when they would announce his name. It is one that I it stuck with me all the time, uh, because one th- they said, "Hey, look, it's Daryl Boston." <laughs> I thought it was so cool as a little kid how the announcer like casually like, "Oh, hey, it's this guy, Daryl Boston." Mm-hmm. Current uh, coach for the Chicago White Sox, first base coach. You know, he had a good, sweet lefty swing. That's what I remember from Daryl Boston. Uh, going on, it has a, it has a, it has a few of these guys that they're back to back. All these outfielders that, man, these guys, these guys were grinders and they could fly. We've got Gerald Clark, and then Gerald Young. So we have the Geralds, one with the J, one with the G. And I always relate these guys to in the video game world, uh, having the speedsters up top. Mm -hmm. And once again, the the awesome shades of the early 90s. (laughs) (laughs) But neither one of these guys was too, you know, spent too much time there with the Rockies. Gerald Clark there in 93 in his 29, age 29 season. And then Gerald Young wearing number two in 93, only played 19 games for the Rockies. Had one hit in 23 plate appearances. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. And that those, those guys, I guess, as we're talking and looking at that once again, no clue that they only played a couple games or any at all uh, because of the, of the deck. And then in the video games too, if their name was on the roster, then they were created and put in there. Mm-hmm. Who knows um, 
what happened, but the next guy, you know, he had some great numbers in his career as a closer reliever, the Rockies first closer, Bruce Ruffin. <laughs> Rocking the nineties mustache. I'm telling you, there was something about it, wearing a mustache and just chucking the baseball. Yeah, we'll have to... There's a lot of these guys, like we said, they're going to get their own episodes. Bruce Ruffin's one of those guys that be deserving or just more of those bullpen staples for the Rockies there in the 90s. Okay, but Skyler, you had to do the research on this guy just this because... We didn't know who he was, where he was. And that was Rudy Cianez. <laughs> Rudy. And I, I saw his name and I said, this guy looks familiar, but not with the Rockies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he pretty much ended up with his career. They got traded or released or something before before the season it was traded to the Padres. And then spent time with them and the Dodgers and just kind of bounced around. And I want to say, I remember him most as being with the Dodgers. I think it's probably from, you know, he was with the Dodgers in that 2007 season. And I think that's where I remember him the most. Because he was a very effective reliever for the Dodgers that year. Mm -hmm. And when the Rockies were making that push, and I was watching baseball nonstop all day, every day. And... That's why that's where we make the connection. <laughs> and his the transaction of being with the Rockies doesn't. He, oh yeah, he was traded to the by the Dodgers to the Rockies for Jody Reed in 1992, November 17, 1992. Then granted free agency July 16th, 1993, and then signed with the Padres, and then just continued to bounce around with that the Dodgers, Atlanta. Back to the Padres, to Texas, Boston, Kansas City, Florida, back to the Padres, back to Boston, and then uh, still with San Diego, and then the Dodgers in 2007, and then the Phillies in 2008. So he was never an official Rocky on the field. Nope. But out of all the players that year, it's probably like, Hey, who wants to come take pictures and put in this card deck? Yeah. Um, <laughs> send the rookie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this guy deserved to be on there because he became a staple in that Rockies bullpen. Darren Holmes. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm kind of, you know, he'll be, we'll cover more Darren Holmes, especially with that early 90s original Rockies relievers. Um, him and Steve Reed and uh, Bruce Ruffin, those guys, because Darren Holmes actually had a very nice career, even though me personally, remember we talk about our memories. They're not, they're not always the best or good, uh, you know, good feelings, but it was always Darren, the hitman Holmes for me. I mm-hmm. thought, ah, oh, man, every time Darren Holmes goes in, he's going to get just hammered and the Rockies are going to lose. But we look back, he, he wasn't all that terrible. That's me. Just mm-hmm. putting all the all the hate on him. Well, then him coming in as a bullpen coach and the bullpen not being super <laughs> great during his career. <laughs> but still, he brought stability to the to an early Rockies bullpen, the original Rockies bullpen, and you know he he means a, a whole lot to the to the organization. Mm-hmm. Especially since he since he pitched, he pitched there for five years, mm-hmm. and really, realistically, did not do as terrible as I, you know, I always thought. A four forty two ERA for a career in Colorado, not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. So Darren Holmes, I do. Uh, I turn the page and <laughs> and respect you for for doing all that you've done and did. (laughs) But this guy, Andy Ashby, little 
flash in that 93 season, then, then they shipped him away, which I think uh, after he went to San Diego and was a staple, he was an all-star for the Padres. And it was one of those where I always thought like, Hey, Andy, he was, he was a Rocky. And now look at him being all good because he was terrible with us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that was another one of those, you know, me holding a grudge as a little kid. (laughs) Yeah, he. there's a lot of these uh, guys in Rocky's history we talk about. And I'm sure we'll dedicate an episode to just clump all those guys together of the, he was a Rocky type of thing. The Roy Oswalds, the the Brett Saberhagens. Kevin Millwood. (laughs) Yeah. Like Chris Volstead. You know, mm-hmm. We're getting crazy names out there like, what? <laughs> or it's like these guys that were terrible with the Rockies and then all of a sudden they became all stars. Or these mm-hmm. guys that were big names and then somehow they ended up on the Rockies. Mm-hmm. Which are kind of which are kind of funny. Yeah, that that trade, he wasn't a very good pitcher there. Just the twenty games in Colorado made nine starts. 8.50 ERA ship him off to San Diego and then becomes a staple for eight years before finishing out his career in Philadelphia in 2000 Atlanta and then Los Angeles for three years and then finished his career as a Padre in 2004. Well, there you go. Well, continuing on, we got just 11 more guys, not too many left here um, to fly through. We've got Chris Jones, who's an outfielder. Uh, I don't think that he made it that year. 86 games with Colorado there in 93. Had a 273 average, 305 on base, 450 slugging. Had six home runs, 31 RBIs. Not too shabby for just an extra outfielder. Yeah, not too bad at all. And I could, you know, that's it. It is something we, we never want to take that away is making it to the, to the pros, to the major leagues is such an accomplishment. And whether it's for just a little bit of time or for long, long careers, it's still an awesome thing uh, to see these, these guys make it mm-hmm. and to have success. You know, uh, Chris Jones had some, you know, two, two seasons where he you know, you really hit the ball. Yeah. Um, and then no. bounced around for a little bit until, you know, finished playing in 2000. Yeah. He's kind of just looking at his numbers, the opinion of just that really solid fourth outfielder, fourth, fifth outfielder. Now, you don't expect great things out of him, but he contributed you know, and solidly contributed. 751 OPS in Colorado. Not too shabby. An 86 and, OPS plus, not too bad. And when we look, when we look, I almost thought it was Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> At the first glance, I said, let's ride. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, here's another staple in Rocky starters in their history. Mark Thompson. <laughs> you know, he is one that when we look at starting pitching at the Rockies, he was up there in the you know, some longevity, some it being a staple pitcher for the Rockies. Mm-hmm. I just think of the clip that has gone around of, <laughs> I think he was the one that threw the pitch that hit John Schmoltz in the back and Jesus crumpled oh, yes. over. That was Mark Thompson yes. that threw the ball. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but from what's looking, he didn't pitch for the Rockies in 93. No, he did not. So that's the thing too that I'm finding interesting here is yeah, these were just straight up here's guys in spring training. Here you go, and guys that just weren't on the roster. Well, yeah, that was you know, his, his he was drafted by the Rockies. It says drafted Rockies number two in nineteen ninety two. Hmm. So, you know, he was one of those original guys. And of course he he made it 94, a couple of starts and then 95. And I looked, holy cow, his numbers were awful. Mm. Just terrible. 
but for some reason. He's just one of those dudes. He was one of those guys that just popped up and do his thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we have a guy that he was a shortstop that 93 season, Freddie Benavides. (laughs) I love in his picture here on the card uh, for the audio listeners, he looks like just the most, (laughs) he just looks really sad in that that card picture. I don't want to be here. Yeah, yeah he pretty been to be this. Another one of those guys that pops up on the video game, and you're like, "Oh, Freddie Benavides," because he was he was there, he was a shortstop, mm-hmm. you know. And that's, um, I was thinking, you know, what's crazy is is Vinny Castilla was actually the dude, the shortstop. Mm-hmm. You know, he was. He was the guy, and Freddie Benavides was the one that always popped up in the video game, and I'd immediately switch him out mm-hmm. <laughs> and put in anybody. Uh, but speaking of, again, another former Rocky that that became a major league manager, Mr. Eric Wedge. I love, I love, I love the pictures on this one. This is, hey, can you come up and take a picture real quick? Yeah, let me throw my stuff on real quick. <laughs> staring, staring out into the wonder. Look like you're in the woods. <laughs> yes. Leaning up against a log. But once again, early 90s mustache. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and some of these guys, it's interesting looking. As their names pop up. He only played nine games with the Rockies. Oh, had just two hits and 11 at-bats. Only a four-year career. He played a total of 39 games as a big leaguer. Uh, played <laughs> mostly with Boston. Played 30 games with Boston, then nine with Colorado. It's a really short-lived career for him, but he was there as a Rocky, even just for a little bit. Yep. And went to, he you know, had you know pretty good uh, coaching career as a, as a manager. I'm not mm-hmm. sure what he's doing now, but we'll probably have to talk about some of those some of those guys in a in another episode. Mm-hmm. But here we go. This one, this one, I I need to put in in a case or something because it's Vinny Castilla, my cousin Vinny. <laughs> so this dude, this is the guy. This is my when we talk about all time favorite Rockies, Vinny Castilla is is one of my guys. I've, I've, I've got the chance. I met him before. I've talked to him. Uh, I kind of shocked him when I spoke Spanish and I was just, you know, shooting the breeze with him. And when I was going to go back to my seats, he's like, well, do you want me to sign something? I was like, Oh, I, I guess. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he's like, give me your hat. So he grabbed my hat and, and signed it and signed my buddies. And it was just a super cool guy. And I hope that, somewhere down the road that he's able to, you know, be a manager or something. I just think, I just want that so much for him. I don't know if he would want that, but I just Mm -hmm. think he would be awesome. He helps out with the Mexico national team and the WBC and has the connections there. Rockies will play in Mexico next year. Astros. So that'll be pretty special. I'm sure Vinny will tag along for that. All right, our next one, Butch Henry. (laughs) Some of these names just sound like random yokels you'd find in the mountains of the (laughs) of the backwoods. These country hardball guys. My name is Butch Henry. I eat sausage for breakfast. (laughs) Delicious. Um, You know, he was a lefty reliever. Played that '93 season, then moved on. Uh, then we have this guy, Jim Tatum, who backed up the big cat at first base and third base and did, you know, his little, his time with the Rockies, Jim Tatum. (laughs) Here's another staple in that Rockies bullpen. The side armor, 
Steve Reed. But he was, you know, Steve Reed and that sidearm. Sarah, did, was he? Did he coach for the Rockies, or was it just uh, just the hitman? Yeah, I think it's just been Darren Holmes, maybe some other guys, but I don't think Steve Reed ever did. Okay. Maybe it's some pitcher that pitched sometime and it made me think of Steve Reed. But, you know, I always – he'll get – he'll be thrown into that group with the Rockies relievers, uh, that side armor, sinker baller type. Uh-huh. Now, this guy, you know, has only one of the most famous home runs in Rockies history. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Eric and Young Sr. Part one, yeah, of the only father-son duo. Uh, the only father and son that have played for the Rockies. Not at the same time. His son is also a one of the main characters in Cobra Kai on Netflix. Good for him. <laughs> his other son is a his younger son is an actor. Awesome. Okay, and then we have Danny Schaefer. <laughs> Danny Schaefer, he uh, interacted with the son when I tweeted about him on every Rocky ever. He's like, man, I wish they'd have a reunion or something out at the the field that he could come out and get to. And I think he did when they celebrated the Blake Street Bombers. I think he got out there. He managed to to make the festivities at Coors Field to help celebrate the Blake Street Bombers. He he managed to get out there and and join in the celebration. That's awesome. I. I would have loved to have been there. I saw somebody put, uh, I saw on Twitter, the somebody recorded up on the on the big screen. They were going through those guys that were there. And and I was like, oh, man, that was just so cool. The different generations of dudes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's just this podcast at Coors Field, mm-hmm. live in front of everybody. Uh, this guy later on, I am not sure. I know he did not. Uh, he was drafted. He was their third draft pick in that 92 draft. He would later go on to be one of those Rocky starting pitchers, Mr. Roger Bailey. Mm-hmm. I believe he was another one that got to that celebration at Coors Field. Yep. yep. And this guy, Skyler, I know you put on an almost a Rocky. And that was our last card, Mr. Brad, Brad Osmus. They selected him, and then they traded him. And also a major league manager. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's that's the deck of cards. The thirty players you got in the nineteen ninety three season of. They got a little bit of, well, this could have been one of our guys. And mm-hmm. also the, these are the guys for our future. Mm-hmm. And then even just, you'd go through that. There's, and then you look at baseball reference. There's so many more that just didn't make the card deck. Or at least the card deck yeah. you have. Yeah. 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 It, especially on this one, but cause there's guys I was thinking like, you know, um, We'll just throw throw some names out there because we like uh, Jayhawk Owens, remember <laughs> Dale Murphy, Armando Reynoso, Willie mm-hmm. Blair, Kent Bottenfield, Kurt Laskanik, Lance Painter. Those yeah. are some of those names that you know takes you back. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those other guys that even just flash in the pan: Mark Knudsen, uh, Bruce Hurst. Gary Wayne, Scott Service, Mark Grant, Mike Munoz, uh, guys that other guys that maybe popped up later on down the road for the Rockies. But yeah, that card deck must have been they gave that away early in the season. Yes, yeah, that seems like it seems like a like a hope home series or something early home series. Thirty years ago, I was eight years old ish. And so I just remember we went to one of the games in Mile High and and got that this was the 
I think they're giving them away mm-hmm. as a promotion. But I'm surprised that I've kept it and kept it in the box. And it's still in somewhat good condition. Mm-hmm. The cards are really nice. Well, what does it look like on the back of the box that we? So it has just the Rockies team set, and then it has the rock the the list of cards. Mm-hmm. That's a nice little thing. And Don Baylor not included in card series. <laughs> so it makes me wonder if maybe they did. It may have been just um, kind of randomized sets a little, or yeah. more sets. It could be. But if I wanted to learn more about the Colorado Rockies fan club, we could write to Rockies Rookies Kids Fan Club, <laughs> PO Box One Twenty, Denver, Colorado. <laughs> should we should have to send something to them? <laughs> send in, see where it ends up. Probably get sent back to you. <laughs> we get a, an email from Mr. Monford's <laughs> iPad. <laughs> But but it's kind of a larger conversation before we wrap up here. And it's it has been 30 years and you've been following the team, like you said, since you're little kid, eight years old. Oh and now you're 30 years later, almost 38. Oh, getting up there, you're about as you're as old, slightly older than the team. What has just this 30th anniversary meant to you? as a Rockies fan with just everything you've experienced as a fan over this, this whole time. I know the Rockies have not put up championships and we haven't won the pennant, the the West, you know, but we've had amazing season, uh, individual records, but overall, there is no other experience than being in Denver for a Rockies game. I know sometimes the product out on the field is not the best, but then it means that the other team's putting on a show and that's something it's fun to see, you know, it's fun to see home runs. It's fun to see great pitching or defensive plays and the banter and the, the atmosphere of especially Coors field, you know, of all the plays in the world, that is one of my, favorite places to be at Coors Field. And when the Rockies are doing good, it is amazing. And when the Rockies are struggling, it's still a great place to see baseball. Uh-huh. And in 30 years, I it's frustrating that we still haven't found a way to have consistent success. And, you know, it is what it is. But there's no better place to go see a baseball game than Coors Field, mm-hmm. and and the purple pinstripes, and remembering even though it's a short thirty year history, as we do this potty, we bring up these names in that joy, or the ooh that guy, or ooh that it takes us back to specific moments that they had, and mm-hmm. how they relate back to us. Yeah, and it's like. The like you said, the organization and the team itself, like there's a ton of problems wrong with that over 30 years. But the cool thing is you then you look beyond that, is that the Rockies are more than just the front office and the record that they put up, but it's the guys that make up the team, the ones that are going out and playing day after day, you know, for better or for worse, whether they're producing or not. It's those individuals that you know, the childhood heroes and the idols and guys we look up to or that we just love watching play. That's what makes the team so special is the people you know, on the field. And we go through that list of you know, Vinny Castilla, those staples, or now today for people that are watching Nolan Jones, uh, Charlie Blackman, even Chris Bryant, uh, them watching today. Those are what makes it special. You go to see those players because they're those heroes. There's those idols that you look up to. And and these guys that are doing things also outside of baseball that we don't focus on or cover. And that's why I love seeing the Roberto Clemente Award. Uh, and, and, you know, this year, Kyle Freeland and everything he does for Special Olympics. 
Mm-hmm. That's those are things that are bigger than baseball. Um, these guys that you know, players that we have no idea how they grew up, where their family, what situations they are in, or what they've been in, and making it to the majors, and then what what they do post baseball career, whether it's coaching or or other you know their other careers. Uh, things that we find out, man, they were going through these struggles as a player or in their life and how they're overcoming or, or those, those kind of situations. And that's what I like to hear. And, and we, we hear some of those with the, with the, the Latin players, um, you know, where they come from, the things that they do back, back home or helping out their families and the community. And like I said, doing those things that are bigger than baseball. Mm-hmm. So 30 years, yes, it's been stressful, but there's been positives, there's been negatives, but we'll just keep rolling with them for the next 30 years. Yes, sir. <laughs> Lead purple. And hopefully we'll, we won't have as many 100 lost seasons because that's terrible. Well, let's let's shuffle up those divisions. Let's get mm-hmm. into the central of whatever teams. <laughs> Expand and realign. Yes. Good stuff. Please. Because the Atlanta Braves having more National League West crowns in the Rockies history than the Rockies do isn't great. <laughs> but I think that's going to do it here for this uh, kind of a different episode of every Rocky ever. And like we said, a ton of those guys that we've mentioned, we'll cover them. We'll get to them. But it was kind of a good cover all here to close out the regular season for the Rockies 30th anniversary. Just trying to do our part and celebrate the team as best we can. But you can find me over on Twitter at sideline underscore crowd. I guess it's called X formerly known as Twitter. That's what they officially call it. Or you find Dustin over at Mr. T Spanish, you know, so find us go through our, the whole archive of tweets for every Rocky ever. You can find the guys that we mentioned and look up their career and look at the pictures that I'm able to find of them out there on the internet. But until next time, I'm Skylar, that's Dustin, and we'll see you next time here on Every Rocky Ever. Farewell. Farewell.